The mayor and commission of Athens, Georgia, ended cash bail for local ordinances. All right, motion passes. Excellent. I wanted to know more about how this came about and what it means. So I caught up with Mocha Jasmine Johnson. People have to be vocal. They have to come up to the mayor and commission. They have to write letters. They have to do phone calls, all of that. And the commissioners have to listen. And also Commissioner Tim Denson. Cash bail is extremely flawed. There's other ways that we can make sure people are showing up for their court dates that are much more effective and much more just that we're pursuing instead. Hear their take on the end of cash bail and the next steps to reforming our justice system coming up. First, let's explore the history of cash bail and figure out how we got to this point. Thanks for joining me. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a thing. Back in the early days of American history, cash bail was used to make sure people showed up to their court dates. And that's still what it's used for today. The difference was that usually your friends or family would be the ones to agree to pay a certain amount of money if you didn't show up to trial. But not everyone had friends or at least not friends who would vouch for them. In that great American tradition, that created a business opportunity. And the profession of bail bondsman was born. In an age before state and nationwide police agencies, before phones, and especially before everyone had a phone in their pocket, this system did make some sense. If everyone knew they could just skip town to get away with basically anything, the courts would have to keep everyone locked up before trial, which would have been expensive, and also would violate our constitutional liberties as described in the Fifth Amendment that we just fought a war with England to ensure. It wasn't a popular idea. So, if cash bail works to get people to show up to court without having to hold everyone in jail, what's the problem with it? Cash bail has always been an imperfect solution to get people to come to court. It creates two different justice systems. A justice system for the wealthy, who can easily pay their bail and get out and not have to have, actually have jail time. And then we've created a justice system for those who lack wealth and therefore lack the ability to pay their bail and have a very different experience where they get to await their, their, their court trial um, sitting in a jail cell, losing their job, almost guaranteed, uh, not being able to provide for their family, not being there for their kids. The Supreme Court, even while upholding the constitutionality of pretrial detention, decided in 1987 that this detention should be a carefully limited exception Yet, the number of legally innocent people kept in jail pre-trial grew throughout the 90s in Georgia and elsewhere. That doesn't seem limited to me. What's going on? Of course, when you look at the criminal justice system, you see that it's disproportionately impact with poor and minority people. So when you look at the whole scale of things, and I started doing research dealing with racial disparities within the criminal justice system, I saw that at the time, Clark County had almost 69% of their inmates that were African American that were currently locked up in the jail at that time. And being that we're fighting for discrimination and trying to tackle those different issues, I look at that as discriminatory. Somehow, it has, it's just, the system is not right. It's not fully equitable. What other ways can we use to get people to show up to their court dates if relying on cash bail is discriminatory? Well, we're now funding as part of the FY20 budgets uh, a notification system through our municipal court that's going to rely mainly on, on text messaging to send text reminders to people that their court date's coming up. A great thing about this is we're talking about not just texting um, the individual who's been arrested, but also we'll get their uh, the telephone number of their wife or their mother or their father so that we can also be sending notifications to them so that you have people around you uh, who care about you also reminding you, making sure that you're accountable and show up to that court date. Let's go over the Freedom Act that ended cash bail in Athens earlier this month. What offenses does it cover? These are local violations. We don't have uh, the purview on uh, higher misdemeanors that are set by the state or set by the magistrate judge. So these would be the local ordinances that, such as uh, public intoxication, that's been one of the ones that people have been arrested on, on the most. Disorderly conduct is, a, is another one that people have been arrested on and have had to sit in jail for before that we're now getting rid of. That's another big one. What does it not cover? Are there any exceptions? With especially those two that were the most common, if, it's a, if the violence is, is present, the officer does have the ability, if they feel like they are a danger to themselves or an immediate danger to others, to still take them into custody. 
Violent acts are not covered by the Freedom Act, leaving officers the discretion to make arrests and take people to jail for offenses like disorderly conduct. Are you worried that some officers might use their discretion in a not so great way sometimes? Yeah, I am. I'm hoping that our officers will do what's, you know, what's in the best interest of the, of the people of Athens. And knowing that we, knowing that we just advocated for this, you know what I mean? To use their best discretion and, and really taking the time to see, is this a local thing that I can write this person up or do I really, really have to do this in a criminal way to where they got to go to jail. They have to, you know, they have to pay that bond to get out. Most people are arrested for state offenses rather than local ordinances. Will AADM keep advocating for the end of cash bail statewide? We have to continue advocating for no cash bail because it hasn't, it hasn't been eliminated completely, especially on a state level. You know what I mean? So we have to um, continue to monitor the different bills that they might pass in 2019. Atlanta ended cash bail last year, but there was some pushback. Some state legislators tried to take away local rights to end cash bail. Fortunately, these attempts failed. With Athens now joining Atlanta, more pressure is applied to end cash bail statewide. Moving these ordinance violations, while that's a small number of the people who are in our jails and stuff, it's the first step. It sets the example. It puts pressure on the state and our, and our state's elected officials to also be looking at you know their bond schedules and saying, okay, what can, how can we be making this more just? How can we be moving things away from getting people out of jail and instead keeping their jobs, staying at home with their families, being there for their children, and still showing up for their court date? But also the backlash may soon become more intense. The fight is not over. You know, our mayor and commission, that's why we commend them so much because this is not a thing that's welcome on the state level. I'll be watching this carefully and for future developments on this issue, you can hit that subscribe button. Thanks to my patrons who make these videos possible and thanks for watching.